Premium quality football shirts at an extremely affordable price. Sound good? If so, check out the sponsor of today's video, jerseyfifa.com. You can see that I've sent these some shirts and they really are top quality. So make sure to click the link in the description to go find a shirt for yourself or perhaps as a gift for someone else. And you can now use code jerseyfifa at checkout for 10% off your order. That's code jerseyfifa at checkout for 10% off your order. I really do recommend their products, so go take a look. Now let's get into the analysis. So ever since Sir Alex Ferguson left the club nine years ago, Manchester United have desperately been looking for a new manager, as we all know. But something that has gone under the radar is that they have also been looking for a right winger for this long as well. It did seem as though Manchester United had finally solved this issue last summer when Sancho was brought into the club. But as we've seen here on the channel, he's actually found much more success playing on the left hand side of the attack. As a result, this has led to both Rashford and Alanga having stints on the right wing over the past couple of months. But to be honest, the position doesn't really suit either player, so again it looks like Manchester United need a new winger. One player that I'm sure who will be high on the list of targets is Brazil and Leeds winger Rafinha. He's currently 25 years old, which means he's just about hitting his prime, so it might be time for his next big move in his career. So one of the best things about Rafinha is that whilst he does prefer to play on the right hand side, he is also very capable of playing through the centre and on the left hand side, but of course his focus is on the right. Now it could arguably be perceived as an issue because United might be worried about finding another player that turns out to be better in a different position, but personally I'm extremely confident that his long term position is on the right hand side of an attack. Playing on the right hand side of the attack, one of the most exciting things about Rafinha is the way that he loves to dribble and really get at his man and he's quite rare in the sense that he is very comfortable going either way. This is something that should appeal to Manchester United and whoever their next manager may be, because a lot of wide players can be slightly predictable, so this weapon and ability to go either way is actually quite impressive. Crucially, having beat his man, Rafinha is often able to keep his composure to make sure that he delivers with his end product, whether that's crossing from out wide or cutting inside onto his stronger left foot to shoot towards goal. Being 25, this is probably the stage of his career where we would be expecting to see this end product, and he has been Leeds' talisman for large parts of the season, although I actually think he could even improve it a little bit further. Playing for a slightly lesser side like Leeds has meant that Rafinha has been required to do a lot of defensive work, and as a result this means he is more than willing to track back, as well as pressing high to win the ball back for his team. This can sometimes be overlooked when talking about attackers, but I think it what, it's what separates the top players from the average players, and Rafinha is certainly moving towards that top end bracket as a player who offers a bit of everything. Rafinha isn't quite the complete package, because his game does still need to be tactically refined slightly, but personally I think he would be a good fit for Manchester United, especially if Leeds were to get relegated this year. Next up on the list is a slightly younger player and has 22 year old France and Bayer Leverkusen winger Moussa Diaby, so again we are going to take a look at some of his strengths and how he would fit into the team next season. Again like Rafinha, Diaby is an extremely versatile player that can play in a few different positions across the attack. And previously in his career he has predominantly played on the left wing, although United would most likely put him on the right. Now this might put some fans off slightly and as I said DB used to find himself on the left hand side a lot. However this season his role at Leverkusen has changed slightly and he spent much more time playing on the right wing this year. Whichever side of the pitch he plays one thing that DB loves to do is dribble and he's certainly pretty good at it and he does an excellent job of combining his real raw pace with quick feet and close control to beat defenders. As I said there, DB is absolutely rapid and he's probably up there with some of the quickest players in Europe at the moment, but like I said, the thing that separates him from the average player is that he combines this with quick feet and importantly quick thinking. When he used to play on the left, DB would regularly use this dribbling to work himself a bit of space before swinging early crosses in, although on the right he would have to play slightly different, cutting inside before then putting a cross in. As I said this would require a bit of an adaption to Diaby's game, although it is something that he's been doing well this season and being only 22 years old, he's certainly at the age where he can adapt his playstyle. On the left hand side, Diaby's best goal scoring season came last campaign with 10 goals in all competitions, however since moving to the right he has already managed to beat this, scoring 16 goals for his side this year. This is a sign of Diaby's ability to adapt his game depending on the situation. Although it has led to his assists dipping slightly this season, so it would be good to see if he could find a bit of a balance in the next couple of years. 
If DB is able to do this, then I think his name will quickly become much more well known. And I think it's only a matter of time before he gets a move to a big club, where he could really develop into a world class talent. The third player that we're going to look at is Brazil and Ajax winger Anthony, whose name is certainly well known by pretty much every Manchester United fan at the moment, thanks to recent transfer rumours. As with all of the players on the list so far, one of Anthony's best attributes is his brilliant dribbling, and he really is an exciting player to watch, throwing in loads of tricks and skills to beat his opponent before then breezing past them with ease. At the moment, Anthony is probably one of the most exciting players in Europe, although at times he may need to simplify things just a little bit, because ultimately, as with everything, the most important thing to find is the balance. Anthony is another one of these players that takes advantage of his good own work to get into the final third, before then delivering with his final product, and he's actually a very good crosser of the ball from this wide position. Anthony is particularly benefit from having someone like Haller to aim for in the box, and if Manchester United intend to play Ronaldo up front next season, then the crossing ability of Anthony could be quite appealing. When these crossing opportunities aren't available, Anthony also has the ability to do things himself. He's more than happy to carry the ball forward into the final third, cut inside onto his stronger left foot, before then bending a shot towards goal. Anthony is yet another player that is currently producing his best goal scoring season yet, with plenty of matches to play, and I think this season in particular, he has really taken his end product to the next level to improve overall as a player. As we saw with Rafinha earlier, Anthony is a player that is also happy to do the defensive work for his team, although at times, despite putting the effort in, he isn't always the most effective presser, which does need to be improved. To be fair, considering he is currently working with Ten Hag at Ajax, he's probably in the perfect place at this stage in his career to develop this side of his game, before he potentially gets his big move elsewhere in the summer transfer window. And who knows, perhaps he could find himself continuing his work with Eric Ten Hag next season, but this time in England at the Theatre of Dreams, and again, I do think this would be good business for United. The penultimate player on the list is yet another Brazilian winger, and this time it is 24-year-old Leon forward Lucas Paqueta, who I must admit is currently one of my favourite players in all of Europe. Now, whilst a few players on this list are versatile, Paqueta takes this to a completely different level, as he can literally play any position in the attack and even in the midfield, but earlier in this season he played on the right a fair bit. In recent weeks, Paqueta has found himself playing in more of an attacking midfield role, and for me that is his best position. However, he does still have plenty to offer to his side when he gets played on the right-hand side. Unsurprisingly, Paqueta is another Brazilian that is brilliant at dribbling with his close control, and again he loves using a little bit of flair to draw a defender in before beating them easily time and time again to progress the play. In this sense, Paqueta is a real showman and entertainer, and I'm not sure if I've ever watched a match where he hasn't keepy up his way past a player, and trust me, he really is a joy to watch when he's on form. Having put this work in, Paqueta is another player that really excels in the final third and is a top level finisher, and he regularly finds himself cutting in from the right hand side just into the box before then finishing low into the bottom corner. Paqueta is another player that is on track to beat his current best goal scoring season, and he's managing to produce these numbers in a side that has struggled for large parts of the season, which actually makes these numbers even more impressive. Despite struggling, one thing that Leon have looked to do this season is press high up the pitch when they lose the ball, and this means that Paqueta would be more than comfortable to make a move into another team that is looking to press. Paqueta actually ranks in the 95th percentile for pressures and the 99th percentile for tackles, and I think that this is something that any future Manchester United manager will want from any of the signings that they look to make this year. Personally, I think that Paqueta is one of the most underrated players in Europe, and whether it's Manchester United or another club, I hope that this is the year that he really makes a name for himself on the biggest stage in football. The last player on this list is someone that is certainly much more well known in the world of football, and that's Germany and Bayern winger Serge Gnabry. Now, this might sound a bit ambitious, but he is out of contract in about 14 months time. So, as with pretty much every player on this list so far, Gnabry is certainly a versatile forward, who probably excels on the right-hand side of the attack, but he is also very capable playing in attacking midfield or up front. To be honest, I'm not actually entirely sure on what Gnabry's best position is, but I'm certainly more than confident that he could come into the Manchester United team and do a brilliant job on the right-hand side of the attacking setup. One thing that is probably slightly underappreciated about Serge Gnabry is his pace, and in particular his power and acceleration which allows him to take the ball in tight situations before then bursting forward past his man. 
He is ultimately this change of pace and acceleration which allows him to beat defenders on a really regular basis and I think it would be good to see him given another chance in the Premier League where he has unfinished business. Gnabry is another player on the list who is having one of his better seasons, but this time he's producing better numbers in assists rather than goals, and at the moment he's on course for his second best season in terms of his assist tally. There's actually a decent chance that Gnabry would actually be on course to beat his assist tally if it wasn't for all the competition currently at Bayern, which at times has made it difficult for him to play on a more regular basis because they have so many starts. The last thing that I want to talk about is Gnabry's finishing ability and in this respect he's probably the best on this list when it comes to scoring goals and he's one of the best in Europe at outperforming his expected goals. This is something that really must appeal to Manchester United because if we look at this season there have been so many games this year when they failed to take their chances so a signing like this a clinical finisher could help take the team to the next level. Gnabry's quality is there for all to see and normally this is a transfer that would cost far too much but the fact that his contract runs out next year could make it a slightly more affordable transfer for Manchester United. That is all we've got time for today, so now it's time for you guys to do your bit and get in the comments down below to let me know which right winger you would like to see signed by Manchester United, or maybe there's more than one. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.